How we plan for sustainable landscapes with green infrastructure in the long term. The large-scale use of nature by man has resulted in a reduction in biodiversity. We have done a lot of work in Sweden to protect nature, flora and fauna. But that's not enough. The trend for the preservation of biodiversity and sustainable ecosystems is still heading in the wrong direction. Almost 2,000 species are at risk of extinction in Sweden if nothing is done. The species in the everyday Swedish environment are becoming increasingly depleted, and at present around 10% of Sweden's animals, plants and fungi are threatened. To reverse this trend, we must focus now more than ever on all the elements of nature in the landscape and how it all fits together. Networks in nature need to be linked together and functioning habitats are needed of sufficient quality and size for different flora and fauna. By identifying valuable areas in the landscape and seeing what the situation is between these areas, we can create a green infrastructure. Working with green infrastructure demands a new perspective and new work methods that consider the big picture to a greater extent than before. We need to enhance biodiversity in the landscape with sustainable ecosystems in order to achieve the ecosystem services that we people need. And to do this, there needs to be better knowledge of the qualities of the landscape among all actors who are currently working with and affecting the landscape, which means everyone from county administrative boards and municipal authorities to landowners, users, entrepreneurs and stakeholder organisations. What do we gain by working with green infrastructure? It is vital for us as people that animals, plants and other organisms live and thrive, as they provide us with important ecosystem services. These are nature's products and services, which we often take for granted, such as trees and flowers capturing carbon dioxide and producing oxygen through photosynthesis and bees pollinating crops and helping farmers to produce rich harvests. Nature can also help to provide protection against climate change. For example, if we preserve or create wetlands that can retain water in the event of flooding so that important social functions are not shut down. Taking care of the water in the landscape brings many benefits to people. For many, lakes and watercourses represent an important source of recreation in the form of bathing, fishing, birdwatching and outdoor experiences. And lakes and watercourses, with their shoreline environments, can also create habitats and dispersal corridors for both aquatic and land-based species, creating a high level of biodiversity. With green infrastructure in the landscape, we enjoy a richer outdoor life, beautiful experiences and better health. Green infrastructure is a long-term task that can also help us to achieve Swedish and international environmental and sustainability goals, as well as outdoor recreation goals. Why must nature fit together for everything to work? Pollinating insects, such as bees and bumblebees, are crucial for agriculture, the gardening industry and wildlife, but there are fewer and fewer pollinators in the landscape. One way of improving the situation for pollinating insects is to enhance the green infrastructure by means of, for example, creating flowering verges that provide insects with food and can be used as temporary resting places as they travel between remote grassland and agricultural land. Flora and fauna in the landscape have different needs for seeking shelter, finding food and propagating. There is therefore a need for different kinds of networks with nature and varying habitats of sufficient size and quality. How should work with green infrastructure take place? County administrative boards are responsible for the regional action plans for green infrastructure in order to work together with the various actors in the landscape to help map out valuable nature and the ecosystem services it provides today. The action plans provide background knowledge for physical testing and planning, the use of areas of land and water, and nature conservation work at landscape level. The action plans are also important in the identification of needs for initiatives and analyses of future threats from, for example, climate change. 
there is already legislation that regulates how areas of land and water must and may be used. Work on green infrastructure does not involve new legislation, but offers support that can provide various actors in the landscape with better conditions to plan and prioritise measures based on their various activities, conditions and ambitions. The first stage in work with the regional action plans involves mapping, collecting, compiling and making available all the knowledge that already exists. All of the actors in the landscape have needed or will need to contribute their part of the big picture. But land-based industries, such as forestry and agriculture, are particularly important. They possess competence and their own views on what is possible to implement based on their perspectives. It is important to have a dialogue and participation between the various actors in the landscape in order to achieve a shared understanding of where in the landscape valuable nature exists. This may be a challenge, as there may be a need for new ways of thinking and collaborating. Work with the Regional Action Plans involves prioritising and choosing initiatives before then taking action. All individual land areas are separate segments in the landscape, with each individual property able to contribute to the whole. Once more, the dialogue with the actors concerned is crucial in joint work on green infrastructure for landscapes that are sustainable in the long term. As the various Swedish landscapes look different, the prioritised measures will also vary between different counties and over time. No one can do everything, but everyone can do something, and together we can achieve more. It is only through close collaboration, well-considered planning and smart initiatives that we can all help to link together forests, fields, parks, grasslands, wetlands, lakes, watercourses, coastal areas and sea areas in order to increase biodiversity and create more effective habitats for flora and fauna.